take a little bit of cleanser. I really prefer like a creamy, hydrating cleanser more than I prefer something that gets foamy and makes your skin feel really tight and dry. I, I can't even listen to what she's saying because the water is running. Skin prep for work. Hailey Bieber's morning skincare routine is what we are reacting to today. And is it just me or like, did I not realize that, that Justin Bieber was married? I'm not. Something didn't click, but I will be clicking. And if you just clicked here and you've never been here before, well, welcome and hello. My name is Cassandra Bankson. I'm an expert and I've been in the industry for over 10 years, but I've suffered with acne for over 15, which is what got me passionate about skincare in the first place. I'm a medical esthetician, and although I've worked alongside and with both doctors and dermatologists, I am not a physician myself. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from other people's skincare routines. Today, Today we're going to be learning from Hailey Bieber's routine. I know nothing about her. Is she an actress? Is she another singer? Is that how she and Justin Bieber met? I don't know, but she's absolutely gorgeous. And today we're gonna react. It's Hailey Rowe Bieber and I just woke up, but I'm going to do this video for you guys showing you my morning skincare routine, how I would prep my skin for a day of work for a photo shoot. So check it out. Wow. First off, represent and love the coffee. Did you know that coffee acts as a vasodilator and a vasoconstrictor? And yes, you can apply products that have coffee or caffeine in them topically. So it can really help with redness and puffiness in the skin. And there's actually an under eye serum from The Ordinary that I have actually tested out. And no, it didn't work on my under eyes, but it works excellently on my face. But I love to see that she and I consume the same caffeination in the morning. <laughs> She's gotta be an actress or a model. She said photo shoot, ready? What is Hailey Bieber? Hailey Bieber is an American model. I see you, okay. One of my favorite things to do when I'm getting ready for work is I will do a mask. I wouldn't do a mask every single day, obviously, but when I want a little bit of an extra glow, I go for a nice, calming, hydrating mask. So I'm gonna put this all over. Make sure it's evenly spread because I'm a little bit OCD. Hopefully this helps to wake my skin up a little bit because she's tired today. I love this. I agree, depending on the ingredients in the mask, you might not want to use it every day, but when you think about it, a mask is something that you put on your skin and you wash off. That's kind of like a cleanser, right? And in some cases, masks, if they have acids, they can be exfoliating. Your mask is basically a form of cleansing, fun fact, but they're my favorite form because they force you to take you time. And in the morning, it's a great idea. Sheet masks or those peel-off masks are totally different. In my personal objectionable opinion, those are not actually masks. No, 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 a sheet mask is not a mask and nor is an exfoliating peel-off mask. If you would like to know why, we have filmed a whole video on that, which really upset the internet, but for good reason, okay? Like I state my case and I back up my logic. Tell us, Haley, which mask is this? I want to know. Something I like to do to essentially kill two birds with one stone while I'm masking is I'll put on the face mask and then I will grab some eye masks like these. I really like these cool gold ones and I will put them under my eyes over the mask that's already on my face just to kind of have two things happening at once. No way. So you know that I hate under eye creams. I think they are a waste of money. They're overpriced moisturizers. I actually like under eye patches, like physical eye patches, but there are very few that I like. One of my favorite is the eco-friendly reusable one from Du, Duux, Due, Ju. It's the one that Charlotte made. She's from TikTok. Really great, reusable, eco-friendly. Well, the only other one that I really get behind is the Wander Beauty Gold Baggage Clean eye mask. It's $5 and it makes me look bougie. The ingredients in there are a bunch of amino acids. I wish they sold this stuff as a serum, but this is an eye mask that I actually use and love. And this is exactly what she's using. This is actually really refreshing. I would use an eye mask in the morning, especially if you're puffy in this area. It's the physical compression that kind of, you know, helps to drain things like fluid out of the face, specifically lymphatic fluid. Oh my God. And like, yeah, you just put these inside of the fridge. You apply them to your face. I love this, I love. And while I have it on, while it's sitting there, under my eyes when they're feeling a little bit more puffy, I will take a little tool like this. I love facial tools, I'm obsessed with them. Give me any facial tool, I'll try anything. But this little gold bar, you turn it on, it, it vibrates, which feels really nice under your eyes. And I'll just go like this, right over the eye mask. Feels so nice. I wish everybody could be feeling what I'm feeling right now. 
I have to say, I do feel really relaxed watching her. Like, I just love seeing people enjoy their skincare routines. This gold under eye bar mask, and also what is this face mask? Do tell me. This gold under eye bar, at least it's only $60. I've seen some of these for like 200 bucks. This is a vibrating under eye face stick vibrator thing. Like, yes, it can help with lymphatic drainage, but you should not have to pay $200. For $60, I mean, the fact that it's gold isn't really doing much. There's no like benefits of that for the skin other than the physical, you know, massage movement. If you have a gold allergy, which is rare, you could actually be causing harm with this, but most people don't have a gold allergy. Overall, it's bougie. And if it makes her feel good, that's what matters. But like looking at her, it looks like she feels good. The real question is, this is a morning routine, so will she wear a sunscreen? We will, we will find out. And once I'm done with that, I sit for the rest of the remaining time with the mask on. Sometimes I think people get a little bit hesitant to mess around with the mask because they're worried maybe their significant other is gonna come in and be like, what are you doing to your face? You look insane. But A, who cares? B, tell them that you are just skin caring. And C, get your significant other into the skincare because then you can do it together and it's more fun. My husband loves to do masks just like I do, so. Who is she? And how do we clone her? Oh my God, this is like the most refreshing breath of celebrity fresh air that my avular sacs have breathed in quite a while. I usually leave at least the face mask on for like eight to 10 minutes. So now we wait. The question is, what is actually in this face mask? Let's pull it up and take a look. Visiola, I can't read. Mask, vis, log in for pricing. Don't tell me to log in for pricing. Give me the pricing, come on. This mask is rich in hydration. It contains protective lipid replenishing active ingredients and it's ideal for all dehydrated skin types. Looks like we have water, kaolin clay, we have macadamia seed oil, glycerin, all of these are fantastic. Cotton seed oil, penylene glycol, all of this is a pretty basic kaolin clay mask. Now, I don't know the percentage of kaolin clay versus the macadamia seed oil and the glycerin, so this might be a more hydrating mask, which is what they claim. It doesn't have any peptides or any like major acids in here, so I don't see it as being super, super exfoliating. You know, there's nothing in here that like raises a red flag to use in the morning. The the question is, how much is it? It's $137. For kaolin clay and glycerin? I mean, I get that she's very well off. I get that she's a model and a socialite and that her husband makes lots of music money, but $137 for a 100 milliliter mask? We can let this slide, but just let me reiterate this again. If you are on a budget, you don't need to pay $137 to get a moisturizing mask for skin. There's a really good moisturizing mask with glycerin and charcoal from Juice Beauty. There's another mask with some clay from Clior. And if you do have dry skin and you don't want something hydrating, there's like the Aztec Indian Healing Clay Mask that has been making its way around TikTok again. It's like $3 on Amazon. You're gonna have to do a little bit of convincing for me because I don't see why this is being sold for $137. Okay. <laughs> I'm back and I'm going to remove my mask now. I'm gonna start with the eye masks. Peel those babies back. Then I'm going to rinse off this mask. She has a great face. Can I just say like, that's a good looking face you got there. I don't necessarily think you have to rinse a mask off with a cleanser. I like to, so there's just nothing excess left on my skin. Take a little bit of cleanser. I really prefer like a creamy, hydrating cleanser more than I prefer something that gets foamy and makes your skin feel really tight and dry. I, I can't even listen to what she's saying because the water is running and it was drilled into my brain that you do not let the water run. I grew up with parents who did not use the heater nor the air conditioner, nor did not let you run the water because all of those things cost money. And even though we had them, we could not enjoy them because we had to be very, very frugally minded. I actually know that Justin Bieber did some sort of a water charity campaign, which was really awesome. And again, like everyone's human. These are habits, they're hard to break, but like 
If you are learning to be a skin intellectual here, and if you are someone who maybe knows somebody else who also runs the tap water, just try to keep that in mind and try to turn it off because it is a precious resource. We need to conserve it where we can, and it'll save you money and it'll save the planet. So let's try to listen to her talk about her cleanser, but let's just drown out the sound of the running water. And if it gives you anxiety, like it does me, then make sure that you turn off the faucet for the like button because the like button is drowning right now and we don't want that to happen. And so does the planet. A lot of the time I wake up and my face feels a little bit swollen, like my lips are really swollen and my eyes will be swollen. I probably eat too much salt, but that's my own bad. So what I like to do is when I'm washing my face in the morning, I give myself a little massage like this, bring the blood flow into my face. Someone's gonna see me doing that and be like, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I will be that person. <laughs> so hear me out, puffy faces are a real thing. This could be due to a multitude of reasons. Yes, if you have water retention because of your diet, if you eat too much or even too little salt, your body likes to stay in homeostasis, it likes to stay happy. And yes, if you overconsume or if you underconsume salt, it can cause issues um, in the body. There's even like pitting edema, which is like a serious form of like this swelling. But in like low levels, you know, what you eat can impact your face. Now something else that wasn't mentioned but that is possible and if not probable if you sleep on your face your body pushes around a blood with the pump that is your heart your body also has lymphatic fluid but there is no pump for the lymphatic fluid which is why movement and massage and muscle contraction is so important well if you're sleeping on your face especially like face down sometimes some of that fluid can kind of pool up in the lips in the eyes especially where the skin is thinner there when it comes to the rubbing of the face is it ideal no but like if you have a slippery cleanser is it okay yeah like it happens I've done it before try to be gentle with your skin your skin will appreciate you in the long run okay. now everything's off I don't dry my face completely when I wash it because I like to apply my serum when it's still a little bit damp she is a skin intellectual this is important to know. So transepidermal water loss is this process where our skin loses water, water loss, trans epidermally, trans across epidermis, the skin, which can lead to dryness and irritation. And that's why most dermatologists advise that you don't take scorching hot showers. But if you've already washed your face and if your skin is wet, you do wanna keep it a little bit damp until you can apply that next product. I mean, is it going to make all of the difference in the world? No, but if you have that pore that's already wet and you kind of have a surface that, you know, is con conducive to accepting more of that moisture, it's going to allow some of these products to penetrate a little bit deeper. I mean, after cleansing or after showering, apply your serums and your products right after. Don't intentionally wet your skin just to apply a serum, but if you're getting out of the shower or just cleanse your face, she's doing it right, okay? She's doing it right. This is a Revat Botanics Revenant Luminous Ceremonial cream cleanser, ceremony cream cleanse. It's $42, which is not insane. Wow, like a celebrity routine that's not insanely priced. This is this is not bad, my friends. I am pleasantly surprised. It sounds like she has dry skin because she's using a lot of different products that are made for dry skin. This has very basic ingredients. It's basically just oil, um, some vegetable glycerin, different alcohols, seed gums. This is not bad. It's in a cleanser. It doesn't look horrible. Is it a little bit expensive? Maybe, but rose oil is really expensive to source because if you ever tried to get oil out of a rose, hmm, exactly, <laughs> those products are expensive. This actually does not look half bad and it makes her face, like her face, that's a nice face. You gotta say, just, it's a good looking face. I like to apply my serum when it's still a little bit damp. I am gonna use this really hydrating peptide serum. I really, really, really love peptides for the skin. I think that it's one of the best ingredients to use. It's one of my favorite ingredients to use. I love niacinamide, I love peptides, I love hyaluronic acid. Those are all ingredients that I make sure I'm using in my skincare. Just press it into the skin. Hilly Bieber is a skin intellectual. Oh my goodness, she is treating her skin right. Mm, if I could be a keratinocyte on her face, I would have a good life. I'm just saying. Now, she mentioned this peptide serum. It says a stem cell peptide serum, and stem cells can be extraordinarily overpriced, so I'm a little bit afraid of this one, but let's see, this is by the Los Angeles. 
$85. Hey, I don't have to part with my kidney for this. Yes, I only have one. These are the ingredient highlights. They're not telling us the entire ingredients list, which does make me a little suspicious, but it does say we have hyaluronic acid. There is a plant stem cell, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. Sure, it's not the same as a human stem cell, but you know, still. We do have tripeptides 5 and 38. Both of these are great. The website does state it's for collagen production. I know that these have been studied in the body and in cellular signaling in the skin, which is great. We do have ubequinone, CoQ10. This is actually used as a medication uh, in medicine, but on the skin, it is an antioxidant. And the website claims it helps with like UV damage repair, which technically antioxidants can. It's a little expensive. like. It's a prestige product. I would love to know what some of your guys' favorite ingredients are in the comments. I'm always curious to learn about new things. I'm gonna do the slightest bit of moisturizer over my serum before I put my SPF on. I wouldn't typically do this long of a routine in the daytime. I would usually just wake up wash my face and maybe like a little bit of serum and SPF. Do you see what's happening here? She is intelligently, elegantly, delicately applying her moisturizer to her under eye area because eye creams are what? Overpriced moisturizers. As long as you like the same texture, as long as you aren't using something and shoving it into your eye, yes, your moisturizer can be used as an eye cream and your eye cream can be used as a moisturizer. And you don't have to pay 10 times the price for a jar that is one fifth of the size. Like I'm really impressed. I'm kind of simping, like a little bit, like a little bit. Before I put my SPF on one thing, that I'm gonna do. I need to know which moisturizer this is though. This didn't look like what she applied from that jar, but this is what she linked in the description. This has olive oil as a main ingredient, which I am not impressed for 120 doll hairs. This has squalane. This does have jojoba seed oil. I love jojoba. This is great, but also like Jennifer Lopez called and she wants her olive oil back. Barrage seed oil, poppy plant extract. This looks like a bunch of plant stuff in some oils. So that's nice. I'm sure it was very expensive to squeeze oils out of all of these plants, but this would not get anywhere near my personal wallet or my internet wallet keychain. But this also didn't even look like what she applied. Like what she applied looked like something totally different. Anyways, I'm glad it works for her. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on my face. The tiniest, tiniest bit. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you have oily skin. I always try to be really careful when I'm talking about oils or recommending oils for the skin because it doesn't work for everybody. We love a disclaimer. We love an educated, informed, skin intellectual queen. Like this is not what I expected from a celebrity skincare. Beautiful butterflies. You uh, in the comments kept requesting this because the comments box is basically a big request jar. But you guys kept, and I was like, oh no, what did she do? Like, what is it? What is it? This is so good. This is, I mean, drop the olive oil. Don't pay 120 bucks for the olive oil. But like, wow. Oh, to be a keratinocyte that would desquamate off her face and just live in her bathroom. And I need the oil to help a little bit with the moisture and for the tool to glide over my face. Now, this right here is a facial massaging tool that you turn on and it vibrates. I really love this device. I gifted it to a lot of people this year for Christmas just because I think they're fun to try and mess around with. So I'm gonna turn it on, not all the way, like a lower setting, and just go in. Super amusing, I know, but it actually feels so nice and I clench my teeth really hard at night. So when I wake up in the morning, my jaw is usually kind of sore and like sore in my temples here. So this feels insane. As a fellow jaw clencher, I can relate. Uh, what is this tool? I'm sure it's ridiculously expensive. Does it do anything other than massage? Is there like an electro frequency that's being you know, transmitted into the skin, not sure. If you do clench your jaw at night, number one, talk to your dentist about night guards, protect your teeth. You could have TMJ, which is rough. Massage therapy can help, honestly, if you're stressed. And even Botox or neuromodulators, you know, botulinum toxin can be injected into certain places uh, in this area so that you aren't able to clench as much. A lot of people don't realize that there are alternate uses to things like Botox and Dysport and Xeomin and these, you know, um, botulinum toxins. So I was right, this Shawnee Darden facial sculpting wand is expensive. Fun fact, we've actually featured Shawnee on our Cassandra Approved page. We have a page where we talk about products and ingredients and brands that we love, but also the fact 
founders and the people behind them and their story about how they got started in skincare. And we have featured her before. This is definitely a luxury product. I would love to be on Hailey Bieber's Christmas list because it sounds nice that so many people got these. This appears to be a large vibrating device. They say it targets wrinkles. It does look like it uses a sound wave technology. I would like to know what that is and I'm going to have to look into this more because I am not super familiar with it. Definitely a luxury product. Is it worth it or not? My face hasn't tried it, so I don't know. Facial massage is great. If you have the money, go for it. But if you are not in the position where you want to spend a ton of money on skincare, you don't need this. There are other devices that are less expensive, like that gold $60 vibrating tool. I would like to know the difference between these, especially with some of these sonic inclusions. For $3.99, I would rather get myself an iPad than, than this at this point. When I usually do this full, full, full routine, it takes about 15, to 20 minutes. The thing that is always most important to me when I'm leaving the house every day is washing my face, hydration, and SPF. Obviously you can pick and choose different parts of this routine that you wanna use. You may be watching this and be like, these facial toning devices look absolutely wild and that's not for me and I wouldn't blame you. To each their own. My last step of this whole entire routine is going to be my sunscreen. I am very big on SPF. I don't leave the house without it. I don't go to work without it. Even if I'm just working from home and I'm inside the house, the sun rays still hit you through the windows. So my final step is sunscreen. I know there's a lot of debate around how much sunscreen you're supposed to use when you apply it every day. I don't have that answer. I couldn't tell ya. Dermatologist scan, two milligrams per square centimeter of skin, but the best way to do that is a stripe across each finger and just slather that onto your beautiful face. SPF is your BFF. Being protected is better than not. If you absolutely hate sunscreen, please start experimenting. There are new formulas out there. You can get matte, you can get dewy, you can get tinted, you can get not. There is a sunscreen out there for you. Right now, for me, I'm using Black Girl sunscreen. Dr. Sam's sunscreen is amazing. There's also Kula sunscreen, which I love. The Elta MD Tinted is phenomenal. We actually have ranked sunscreens based on white cast before. Feel free to check out that video, but I'm just gonna keep checking out her face because it's a good one and she takes really good care of it. The way I do it, and I am so down to be corrected, people can call me out if I'm wrong, but I use like one full pump of sunscreen and then if I feel like I need more in other areas, I will add more. I use a tinted sunscreen just because I feel like it blends into my face and my skin a little bit better. Can't forget the neck. Can't forget the eyelids. The eyelids are important because those will get wrinkly one day too. Tap it more around my eyes. How did I not know who this human was? Where can I get more of this human? Subscribe. I am subscribing, I am hitting the notification bell, and I am not drowning the like button. That is literally the only thing I can say about this routine, is that we can please be better about turning off the sink. I simp for all of this, and I don't know how it took me 28 years of my life to figure out who this amazing human is, but I have been enlightened, and I am here for more of it. Please drop a night routine. If this is skin prep for work, what about weekend skin prep? What about night skin prep? What about vacation skin prep? I'm subscribed, and I am here for all of it, okay? My skin cells appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm in love and I love skincare, and I love you. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys, bye.